Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing the Hex Gaming Phantom Controller for the PlayStation 5 and PC. Hex Gaming has been making higher-end controllers for PlayStation and Xbox for a little while now, but this is actually a Kickstarter campaign for them. The good news here, though, is the company does have a track record for production with their other controllers, so no need to worry about whether you will get the product or not, which can be the case with some Kickstarters. Now I'll be covering these specs first like I do with all of my reviews and then I'll shift into what I like, don't like, and the gray area before wrapping the video up. The Hex Phantom uses the PlayStation 5 controller molding and honestly it looks identical to it but with some upgrades that I'll talk about here in a minute. This weighs 295 grams. It has a 1560 milliamp battery which the company says will match the regular PlayStation 5 controller at 5 to 6 hours of playtime. And for connection options this has Bluetooth 5.1 or you have the USB type C port on the top of the controller. In terms of devices that you can connect this to you have the PlayStation 5, PC, as well as Android and iOS using the Bluetooth. For PC, you can connect this either via Bluetooth or the USB Type-C port on the top. Now with that, I will say you want a good Bluetooth connection. I've always had issues with my regular PlayStation 5 controllers with my motherboard. It does have built-in Bluetooth. It's just not very good. So I did order another receiver, ended up having an issue with that, so I couldn't connect this to my main PC, but I was able to get this to connect to my secondary PC without an issue. I could connect this to my iPhone as well. In regards to turning Bluetooth on, it's the same for the regular PlayStation 5 controller. You're going to hold down the Hex Gaming icon instead of the PlayStation 5 icon, and then you're gonna hold down, I think it's the share button now. Essentially, it's the left-hand side menu button outside of the trackpad. Hold those down, this will eventually flash blue, and then it should pop up for you. Inside of the box, you're going to get the controller, eight swappable thumbsticks, the Drift Fix calibration tool, that's just shorthand for Drift Fix, the Quick Start Guide, and Hex Guide. Now, this is for one package that I was able to get. They have multiple tiers of this, though. So for the premium package, you get all the things I just mentioned, plus a 13-foot USB-C charging cable and a carrying case. If you get your hands on the ultimate package, you get all those previous items plus a silicone cover, precision rings, trigger extenders, and a stand. You can purchase most of these items as extras if you like as well on top of these. So if you just got the main package, you can kind of cherry pick the other items to your liking. For color options, you have the Chaos Black, which is what I have, Vision White, Shadow Gray, Dream Blue and the Explorer Edition, which personally I think looks the coolest. Moving on to the physical layout of the controller, starting on the front, you'll find the same layout as the PlayStation 5 controller here with the PlayStation icon button being replaced with that hex gaming icon. The buttons here feel exactly the same as the PlayStation 5 controller. And as far as like the haptic feedback and all the things that you would get with the regular PlayStation 5 controller, you get that as well. So when I'm playing this on my PlayStation 5, all the same effects, which is awesome. They kept all of that. They did not remove that. For the top tracking pad, this has words on it where the regular PlayStation 5 controller is blank. On the top of the controller itself, you will find the USB-C port for charging along with the shoulder buttons and triggers and a cover that when removed exposes the drift fix module, which allows you to adjust and correct joystick deviation within a range of 0.12 units. I'm gonna showcase all of those adjustments here in a little bit along with the software, but shifting to the back, you have the adaptive trigger control, which allows you to switch between adaptive and digital triggers with the adaptive having a seven millimeter stroke length and the digital having a 1.5 millimeter length. In the center, you're gonna find the profile button, which has six different profiles that you can swap between, which are ranged, fighting, racing, building, flight, and melee. 
Now from my testing, these aren't set up. You actually have to set these up. So you have to link whatever buttons you want to those profiles. It is just more of a, hey, with this color associated to this particular thing. At least that's what I've found. And I will showcase how you actually set those back buttons here in a little bit. With those back buttons though, those do have a tactile click to them. So they're not like the same membrane type switches that you find on the front of the controller. It has more of a mouse click to it. And the triggers will have a mouse click to them as well if you shift over to the digital triggers with that shorter 1.5 millimeter stroke length. And with that being said, let's go ahead and do a quick sound test for all of the buttons on this. And last on the bottom, you have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and then the pins to connect this to a charging dock, just like the regular PlayStation 5 controller. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't get this to work with my third party charging station for some reason. I don't know if that's gonna be the case with every single one. And again, it is a third party charging station. So just wanted to let everybody know that for me, unfortunately it didn't work, but other products, it may work for you. Shifting over now to the drift fix, and the software that they give you, it's not really software, it's a website you can go to that has the software built into it where you can test one, the buttons, but also is there any drifting going on with the thumbsticks? I'm gonna showcase footage here as well with me trying to adjust this. It's really hard to one film, but if you have this plugged in on PC, which is how you can actually test and use this, there's not something that you get to use on PlayStation. It is only done on PC and it has to be plugged in via the USB type C charging cable. It's hard to actually adjust and turn these knobs. It's kind of an annoyance. I would say I would have liked the better design feature way of being able to do this because you just don't get the full turn. You ultimately end up hitting the cable. Now this isn't tied together with this footage. So this isn't like they're synced up. So just keep that in mind, but you adjust these knobs and then you get to go back and you test the circularity there. And as you see me actually take this and then roll it around, you'll see what's the margin of error. It gives it in a percentage and it's highlighting where is that error. So what are these things doing? So as you're adjusting these little knobs on the controller, you'll actually see on the diagram where they're shifting on the X and Y axis. On this, it would say axis zero, axis one, axis two, axis three, but it's an X and Y axis here. And so you will see, hey, where's that dot essentially shifting over to so you can reduce any drifting that may be going on. So let's blow this up a little bit so you can actually see it here. So we're going to test this really quick. You can see, hey, Average air right here is 15.1. I want to reduce this. So I'm going to try to adjust the turn knobs on the controller to actually do this. And this is really the process that you're watching me do. I reset it as I make those adjustments. Watch the dot, because you will see that it does then shift and move around. You can see where it spiked right there. That's where I turned it too much. So you have the ability to fine tune the controller, obviously reduce that drift, but hopefully make it even tighter in regards to the overall control that you have here. We wanna minimize the average air. I'm gonna jump ahead and showcase what I eventually get this to. So with this, I ended up dropping it down from the 15 to 14.5 on the left and then on the right i was able to get it down to 12. i did spend a little bit more time on this and i was able to get these roughly to about 12 percent here this now shifts us over into my general thoughts on this because i think this is a really cool feature 
but I also understand people because I've read some of the comments on just their advertisements and other videos, which is like, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just use software, like build it into software so I don't have to mess with it this way. And I think what this does give you is more control specifically for, for the PlayStation 5. Where they kind of miss the mark there is you still need a PC. You have to take it over to the PC, plug it in, use this website, this app here to check everything and then bring it back. Where if we're just looking at a regular PlayStation 5 controller, you just don't really have that option. You could go with the Pro. I've used that. I didn't particularly like it that much, but that's a personal opinion thing also. So ultimately, my opinion on this is I think this is a cool feature because it's giving us something that I haven't seen in the market. It may be out there, I just haven't seen it. But the fact that this has this ability to adjust any type of potential drifting that you have built in to the controller, where one, obviously you need to check it via the software, but you could also just adjust it and wing it, I guess, if you wanted to, that is an option. But I haven't seen this in the marketplace. What I've seen is, hey, we can adjust the tension with the thumbstick so you can make it so it has essentially just more resistance in it or less. I haven't seen this specific thing. You look at the PlayStation 5 Pro, you can actually swap out those thumbsticks. I tried that controller. It wasn't my personal favorite here, so I ended up sending it back. I thought I was gonna be able to utilize it on PC in a better fashion. Didn't quite suit that need. But that ultimately is going to be my point. That one didn't suit my need. This one may not suit your need, but it may suit somebody else's need. There's more options now. And I think that's a good thing because once you find the thing that you want in the marketplace, that'll be the controller that you really like. If this isn't your thing, you don't have to get it. But if this is something that you want on a controller, you now have this option. And so I think ultimately that's the main draw of the controller. They have this very unique feature if you want to be able to adjust any type of potential drifting on the controller itself. Outside of that, we're looking at, hey, you actually get the eight swappable thumbsticks. You have those options as well, which are really, really nice. I like the molding. If you like the PlayStation 5 controller, you're gonna like this. I like the fact that one, it obviously works with the PlayStation 5, but you still have that Bluetooth mode so you can connect this to your PC. Once I connected it to my second rig, I didn't have any issues with this because the Bluetooth issue was more to do with my main PC. If you have a good Bluetooth dongle, connection here is solid. There isn't any latency or anything like that that you're potentially going to have. And this can also connect to your iPhone or your Android phone, so you have those options as well. If you have a handheld, you can connect this to a handheld. There are multiple options when it comes to this. The big thing here is no Xbox, no Nintendo Switch. Obviously keep those things in mind. Now we also have all the same things that we find with the PlayStation controller. I didn't cover all those things, but in terms of like the built-in microphone, you have the speaker that's built in, all the haptics that you find on the PlayStation 5, you actually get those here. So all those same things, it's just taking this and like, hey, what extra can we add to this to make a better controller, especially if you don't want to go with the PlayStation 5 Pro controller. Now. The back of this has a premium grip. I haven't covered that yet. I like the feel of that more so than the regular PlayStation 5 controller. It just, one, it feels good in the hands, but it feels like it's not going to easily slip out like the PlayStation 5 controller. I love the color options that you have with this. I really wish I was able to get my hands on that transparent one. But with this, we also have the back paddles if you do want those. They are not mapped by default, so you do have to map those out. You get the six different profiles that you can then map everything out to, which I do want to showcase how do you set the back panels? How do you set that to whatever button you want it to be? Really quick on Horizon Zero Dawn here, looking at this, this isn't set to anything for this back paddle. So you have to actually push the back button into a pairing mode, it will flash blue. You hold down the button you want to pair it to and then hold down whatever paddle. When it flashes red like that, you know that it has officially been paired. Then you wanna pull this out of the pairing mode and you are good to go. So you can see here, this is now paired to jump. No macros right now. I don't know if that's something they're able to do 
in the future but if you wanted to use this on pc and then actually create a macro for that you do not have that ability right now they did say on their faq they're looking into it maybe down the road they are able to do that we may see software for this down the road potentially outside of just the website where you can check the drifting we may actually get software for this potentially if they are going to allow you to map out any macros so that would be really really cool and last i love the adaptive versus digital trigger so you either have that seven millimeter or the 1.5 millimeter stroke length for those triggers so you do have that option where the regular playstation 5 controller doesn't have that at all now standout negatives i don't have any words like hey performance really sucked this wasn't doing x y or z i didn't have any of those issues a lot of gray area things though which are things you may or may not care about that's why i don't put these in just a purely negative kind of category because certain people may care about these things certain people may not for me a larger battery i do understand that does mean an increased weight here but that's been one of the major complaints with the regular playstation 5 controller is the fact that it just doesn't last that long Larger battery here would have been really, really nice to just extend playtime beyond that five to six hours. Let's get it up towards 10 or 15 hours if possible. And last is gonna be kind of multi-tiered with this because it's gonna be the price here. I think a lot of people are gonna look at this and they're gonna say it's too expensive. I think about where did they come up with that price point? This being a Kickstarter, it being a smaller company, they don't have the same resources as a larger company like Microsoft or Sony, for instance. So here, they're dealing with a smaller production batch, which means their overall cost to make this is increased. You also have to make sure everybody gets paid, keep the lights on. There's a lot more packed into this than just like, they're like, hey, let's just set it at this price. They have to include all of those other costs with this, research and development, things like that. And so again, I understand the price here because they're a smaller company. It's going to be higher than compared to, again, Sony or Microsoft. What you get with this on top of that is where I would want maybe a little bit more on the extra side. So if you get this right now, you're going to pay 200 bucks for the controller. If you can get the Kickstarter special, you're going to get the carrying case and the USB type C cable. That's an extra 10 bucks. I think that's going to be the best deal. Then you get into like higher tiered ones where it's like, let's go to 220, get the pro pack. Then we get like the silicone sleeve. You get the stand, the trigger extenders, the precision rings. You get more and more extras with this. And so to me, it feels although high. And I, I know a lot of people are going to say like, that's way too high. It feels appropriate considering all of those other things that I mentioned. Where I would suggest an adjustment here is just give everybody the USB Type-C cable and the carrying case, regardless of the package. Don't include that extra cost. Just make it so, hey, if you're paying the 200 bucks, you get those things by default. In this, I think they should have also just made and included a receiver for this, the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. So the if you're going to use this with PC, you don't have to potentially buy a Bluetooth dongle like I did, which is another additional cost for you. Just include that so that, hey, if you have PC, you are covered regardless with this. So now you can use it not only with the PlayStation 5, no extra cost or anything like that to use this on your PC. If you don't have Bluetooth built into your motherboard or like my instance, I do have it. It just isn't very good. So I had an additional cost to use this on PC. With all that being said though, that's going to wrap this video up. And in conclusion, they have a great controller here in terms of the aesthetics with matching the regular PlayStation 5 controller. We get some of those extras, the Drifix being the main draw here, but also the back paddles, the digital versus just regular adaptive trigger option on this. But I think ultimately the price may be the larger determining factor as to whether or not you end up purchasing this. So I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think, one, about the controller, but also the price point here, is it worth the $200 with the adjustment to the drifting here compared to other controllers that again may do that digitally or may 
not allow you to do that at all. Do you think it is worth that or not? Let me know in the comment section. If you do want to pick this up, I will have a link for this in the description so that you can do that. If you have any just questions that maybe I didn't cover or answer in the video, let me know in the comment section as well. And I will make sure to answer that for you there. If you like the video, hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.